Now, Mario, is there anywhere else that they can find the book besides Amazon? Is it on your publisher's website? Yeah, it's on the Ex Libris uh, website, but it is also on the um, Walmart has it, um, Barnes and Nobles has it. You know, if 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 you look in the internet, you're going to see. I mean, there's a whole slew of different uh, bookstores that have it on their website, and uh, the easiest is, of course, Amazon. Now, you do have your own website. Let's give them the address of the website and tell the listeners when they go to the website what they'll find there. It's a beautiful website. Thank you, Suzanne. It's www.mariocartaya.com. Simple enough, right? Simple enough. When they go there, there's a bio about you. What else is there, Mario? There's there are several things. There are some things about your company. Well, you you, you go to the the web page. There, there are two web pages. Uh, uh, the one that I gave you is the book. The other one is the company. Uh, that's something different, of course. And there you can see all the work that I've done, the uh, awards, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, the book. I uh, will give you um, um, things to read in from the book, you know. Uh, it'll also give you photographs of some of the activities that we've had. I mean, I've, I've been uh, very fortunate to have had some people ask for the book um, that you would recognize. Um leaders from around the world that have asked for copies of the book, including the Queen of Spain, which was kind of cool. You know? It is kind of cool. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was kind of cool. Um, and, and then you're going to go into a couple of book reviews, uh, two major international book review companies that have reviewed the book, very positive uh, reviews. And then you go into some commentaries, from some of the people that have read the book and they leave their commentary on different sites. I picked some of them uh, that I thought were worthy. Um, And then you go into, of course, um, my bio and there's all kinds of, of goodies in there. Good. That will make it fun and we'll, we'll bring the book to life. Oh, I, I'm so glad you said that because that's exactly what it does. I really hate for our time to end. I am having such a wonderful time talking to you and hearing the stories. You are such a good storyteller just right here with me. So thank you for for this. This has been so much fun. I always like for an author to have the last word about their book. And I know that this is a difficult question for you. And I, I gave you this beforehand so it wouldn't surprise you, but... The listeners become readers, I think, very quickly for a book like this because it's so interesting. When they become a reader, my feeling about how they'll read your book is not just sit down and devour it cover to cover. They'll sit down and they'll read your book slowly because it it bears digesting. You read pieces of this and you think about what's happening, who these people are. This is a real person involved in a historical event that we've all heard about. But this is an insider point of view of what's happening to a family and to a real group of people. So I suspect that they'll read parts of it and then they'll digest it. Hopefully they'll also share it with their family. Family table discussions with children, getting them to hear this history firsthand, I think would be a very powerful thing to do. I'm a former teacher, so I can see if I was a history teacher, I would want this book, and I would want to bring this book into my classroom, and I would want to use this as a first-person account of what happened to someone who came to the United States during this period. My brain's just exploding with ideas about what you could do utilizing your book. So I can see that people will read this in a lot of different ways. But for you, you're the writer. 
This is your experience. This is your, if you'll pardon the expression, this is your life. What do you want the reader, when the, when they finish, when they come to that last page for the last time and they close the cover either electronically or physically, what do you want them to take away from your book, Mario? That this is a book for our times. This is a book for today. It's a book that is needed. It's a book that people need to read. There are psychological forces that define us. But there is also the power of enduring hope. And right now, we all need to tap into that power of enduring hope because by doing that, we can achieve a purity of heart, reconciliation, put our souls at rest and evolve into better versions of ourselves. This book really is meant to be a universal message of love and enlightenment that can only begin when we begin to search for self-actualization and that inner peace. And the key word in this whole thing is the inner peace that we all need. How, how do we go from all of the hate and the anger and the fear that we're exposed to daily into achieving an inner peace? And if we can all do this, wouldn't we help make everything better? Mario, my friend, I think you're trying to change the world, and I'm right there with you. It has been delightful and inspirational. Thank you so very much for being my guest today on Books on Air. Suzanne, it's been my pleasure. Thank you. Now remember, you can find Mario's book on Amazon, and the title is Journey Back into the Vault in Search of My Faded Cuban Childhood Footprints by Mario Cartaya. You've been listening to the Books on Air podcast brought to you on webtalkradio.net. You can also hear this podcast on iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. I'm Suzanne Harris, and I so hope that you'll join me for our next Books on Air podcast because remember, you never know who's going to be here. And you never know what we're going to talk about. Thank you so very much for listening.